Hello, in this video, we're going to set up everything further in Unity. So we're going to make sure our maps are correctly used. Then we're going to set up colliders in Houdini. But first, let's start with the material and make our door look nice. So we're going to use the Unity graph here again. We can right click, go to shaders, and we are going to use a PBR graph. And I'm going to use called sci-fi door shader. And this should look something like this. So first of all, uh, I would like to have my textures in here. So I'm going to drag and drop them in here. And these are then my base textures. And while we are here, might as well add the property of textures. So my mask texture, door, and then we can replace this and also the same here for my normal map. So a normal map, normal texture. So if you have watched the create tutorial, this is going to be a very similar setup. And I'm going to first start out with my masks and filter out some of these channels. So if you remember correctly in the red channel, I saved the the edge damage and also the occlusion. We can then subtract some of these values as you can see here. If I play around with the value, I can get that information. So we're gonna play around with these values and for the moment I'm gonna keep them on a side and build out further here. So it would also be nice is that we can multiply by certain values. So you can see the intensity is getting a little bit higher and also clamp the values after that so we are sure it's in a zero to one range so now let's make some more parameters and let's make some colors and for example my base panel is going to be some blue color this is another coral which i will be using the material id and then a metal color something like this and you can just right click on them and convert to properties call this my my base paint material and this is then the other paint material and this is then the metal color and let's first lerp so I want the blue channel, which are these panels, and use them in the lerp. As you can already see here, we have the panel, and I want to switch between the blue and the dark one. So if I would already put this in my output and click save. So create a material, sci-fi door, and let's use our door shader that we are making and let's drag and drop that on the panel so we can visualize what we're doing so we can already see we have the color control here so we can control this color let's already assign let's also plug in the normal map and save it So you can also see the normals. So of course we're gonna have to pick a color that fits more on the environment. So this one should be definitely the more darkish one and then this one should be the more bluish one. Like our panels. Now we can also start for example with the, the metal. So we're gonna lerp again and we're gonna use the edge uh, information here. So I'm going to plug it in like this and also show it here. And I can always see that this is way too much, of course. And I will, and I will immediately see that this is, of course, way too intense. And later on, I'm going to multiply a mask in here. So we have some variation also going on. So it's not that intense anymore. And let's say we also wanted to add that ambient occlusion. So again, I'm going to use a lerp and plug in the color you can also make this 
a parameter that we can control outside of this network. So I, I quickly put it here in the red, so it's very visible. So this is still on a quite intense level, but it's working and we can always create some parameters to control this, so it's not that intense anymore. So I'm also going to click here and I'm going to call it a, I'm just going to go dirt color. Then we also, I would like to have that the, the green channel with the glowing light. Same system here. I'm going to use a lerp and plug in the lerp and our mask, of course. And again, creating a color. So color. And here, what we actually have to do is we have to put it on HDR. And this allows us to increase the intensity. So let's say I make it a little bit uh, orange and red. And let's just increase this to 10, for example, and see what happens. So you can already see a little bit here. We have this little glow. And let's plug this in and save. So, and if we go back here, we have the glowing effect on the door. Okay, so we can definitely see that the 10 I put in here is way too much. But it's cool that we can do these sort of effects. So I'm gonna lower this and maybe set it to three and also expose this value and I'm gonna call it glue color. So now we have assigned our color and we know what each mask is doing. And I'm gonna move on to the roughness then. And for that, I'm gonna load in a pre-made texture. So I've also made sure that the roughness value of this texture is similar to the panels and the overall scene I've made. So we don't have to struggle too much with getting like similar values. Then when having this, I want to remap this. So the minimum and maximum that are going in are zero to one. And the ones that are going out are the ones that I control, which will be some parameters that I will be controlling here. So I'm going to create a vector one, which is called the minimum of the roughness. And I'm also going to create the maximum then, of course. Well, I noticed that I actually, I call it the roughness because I'm quite used to working with the roughness, but in Unity it's actually called smoothness. So this is actually wrong so i might better change it then dragging these values in here and i need to plug them in here but i have only one slot so i'm gonna combine them and we need to use the rg so we have some control in the roughness then of course I want to have different roughness on my metal, so I'm going to lerp again and plug in the metal and that will be this one and plugging in the roughness. And I can also create a new parameter here and then call it metal smoothness. And let's take something like 0.6. So it's like a very subtle right now, but we can always change the value. And I'm going to plug this in my smoothness. Then I'm also going to plug in the metalness, which was this map. So now we have some basic uh, smoothness. We can also include that ambient occlusion or dirt-like map uh, to get also roughness variation in there. Then. I'm going to make the normals a bit more interesting and I've also have a pre-made normal map. So here's my pre-made normal map and we can actually do a normal blend. So we can blend these normals together. So we have just a little subtle uh, normal detail of the materials. And I also can use the lerp here because I don't want this detail on on my metal. So again, 
using this metal value and a one to normal here. So there's a subtle noise in here and that is going to be used for the paint and not for the metal itself. And we can definitely see roughness and so going on. And we can always control these values so we get more reflection, for example. Uh, what also could be nice is that we actually go here in the parameters and we can actually go to a slider mode. Uh, this could be very nice to have because as artists it's always nicer to have uh, some sliders. So next I'm going to tweak the metal mask a bit because it's not that nice at the moment. Make a little bit more room here. What I first would like to do here is to create a noise. So if you just type in some noises, we have a simple noise, which look like this. And I'm going to scale it a bit up so you can clearly see the noise. And I'm going to use a power. And with the power, we can sort of like play around a bit more. And I'm going to subtract In this, so we have a little bit of variation going on. I need more space, and actually, I need to put it here so we can always afterwards uh, increase the intensity. And then, here, I'm gonna use a floor note to sort of like get rid of the grayscale values and click save and let's see material looks now so it looks very glossy let's put that back and my metalness is not really visible right now and this is because if you go back here if i slowly crank up this value you can see that there is more and more going on so if i would now save this yeah so now we can clearly see this so we're going to make some parameters here so we can actually control more of this. So we're going to create some more parameters and so edge damage intensity. And let's take one by default. And I'm going to make some more. And I'm going to use that in here. And I also would like to have the edge noise scaling. So now we should have the ability to control some of the edge damage and it should be able to control it nicely with some of these values. And I can see the noise effect going on here. So we have some variation in there. So let's say we just have a subtle, a subtle damage with a few areas, something like this. Then I'm going to build some more control in my pre-made textures. And I would like to control the tiling of them because I don't like how they feel right now. For these two maps, I want to have a tiling. So if we create a node, and there is one that is create tiling and offset. And we can use this in here to then offset or tile textures. So I'm going to create a vector 2 and con tiling. And plug it in the tiling and then save it. And now we should be able to tile the textures. I don't really like how the controls are going, so I might just switch uh, switch this out with a normal vector one. And go for a slider. And my default value is, of course, one. And let's say my maximum is uh, 8. And now this is a bit nicer to control. And then for the final touch, uh, making this light animate with the, with the time and with the sinus. And I also would like to have a multiply so we can speed up the value. So if I put 100 in here, it's going super fast. So, but of course, you would like to have something that goes not too fast, not too slow. So that would be nice to have. And I'm just going to blurp this. 
I'm going to blur this and plug in my mask here and you can see the little lights going on and replace this and press save. You might also need to clamp this because it's going from 1 to minus 1 so I'm just going to clamp it. So you can also expose more parameters and values uh, to control more of the material if you would like to. So, but for now, but I'm going to call this finished. And I'm going to move over to creating colliders. So now we are here back in Houdini and we're going to set up the colliders. If you go to this documentation about uh, Houdini and Unity, we can actually have attributes and groups that control certain things in Unity. So if you scroll all the way down here on this page, uh, we have these groups and they are representing colliders. We can use this in a group and in Unity it will automatically be recognized as a collider. So there are other options also like terrain features or instancing. So what I mainly want is actually box colliders. So I'm going to look into simple collision and they are saying that we need to use a box at the end to have a box collider. So I'm just going to copy this here. I'm going to go here and uh, make a little bit room so we can have a group node and make a group node and select everything in here and copy paste the name. We paste it from the documentation and type in after it box. So if everything is correct, we can test this out already by saving and going back here, rebuild the asset. And we can see we have our colliders, but now, uh, but now our doors are gone. So we didn't render our geometry. So we actually have to put rendered in front of it and put in rendered in front of it. You don't have to do this necessarily here afterwards. You can create your own geometry, assign a certain collision and then merge it here with the rest of it. And this would then also be a collider. So I'm going to back here and rebuild the asset and now everything is fine and I can see my box colliders going on. I'm going to do the same then also for the frame. So in here, I'm going to copy this group. So we have this as collider. Also here we have this and let's see how well this works. And I can see here that it didn't fully work nicely because there's one big box glider here. So let's say in this in this case of the door frame, maybe we need to make a more custom model. So we could definitely make a custom model and we can, for example, start out by asking the bounds of the object and then mirror this and merge this result. And I can use this as a custom mesh. So again, using the group node here. So in the group node, we actually need to fill in collision geometry. And I'm going to merge these two together and save the asset and go back in Unity. And now we can see that we have the correct colliders also going on here. And this is actually more to show you that you can also procedurally generate colliders and use them as a custom mesh. And then let's move on to the next step, which is adding a trigger. So in front here, I want a trigger. So when the player comes close by the door, the door is going to open. And I'm going back up here and I want to create a new box. And I'm just going to call it collider door. And I'm going to also show the ghosting objects. And then here, um, might make it something like this. So again, here we're going to use a group node. And instead of having this rendered collision back on the website here, we can look for the, we can look for a simple collider with trigger. And I want a box and I'm going to put a no node also and call it a collider door. And I'm going to save it. So I now have this collider 
If we look at the collider, we can see that this is a box collider with a trigger enabled. The next step would be then also adding a script automatically to this slot. And you could also do that in Houdini. Going back to the documentation, we can go in Unity scripts. And if we create a detail attribute with the string type called Unity script, we can assign a script. So I'm going to create an attribute called Unity script with the detail attribute that is a string. So we can type in certain text. And in here, we're going to say what script I would like to have automatically assigned. So in my case, the script is just called move model. So I'm going to call it move model. And let's take a look. So right now we can see that our script is then automatically assigned. We just have to make sure the name is right. And this script, I'm not going to go over how the script is built, but I'm going to give you the idea of how it works is first of all, the script is going to look at start at objects that are called door left left. So in my case, I already made sure that all the namings work correctly. So door left left and also door right right. So I have made sure that that works. If you would go back in Houdini, we can see that they copy the names of these nodes. Also, there's no node called left. So they copy these names to structure the naming and also in here. So if you're consistent enough with your naming, the script will work out of the box. So we can generate multiple versions. And when we just press play, it's going to work. I also have here a asset pack to, so we can play the level. There is a link in the description below if you want to check out that asset pack. So here we have my door. I can already see that my door might be too small. So I'm going to walk close to the door and I can see it's working. I might be, I'm not able to pass through it because it's too small. So I'm going to quickly scale this up. Um, just so I don't have to recalculate the whole door just for testing. And you can see my door is working nicely without having to set up all animations and so on. That was it for the tutorial series on the procedural door. And with this tool, you're able to generate multiple doors and they're all plug and play when you're consistent enough with naming on the script. Thank you for watching.